It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's just a gift. Hi, landing crew. Good morning, guys. So it's the weekend. So we're going to do fun, exciting things. You got to go grocery shopping. Clean the house. Are you ready to clean? I, I don't want to clean. You don't want to clean? I'm not a parent, you know. <laughs> well, kids can clean, too. Like when you go and clean your room or you put all the laundry up for me. You're such a good helper. Or I do this. No, you gotta be nice. <laughs> be nice to mommy, okay? <laughs> About to leave. Already packing. Come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be. Life with no distractions, we'll get away. All right, guys, we are done with doing the post office run. I've been having issues with my mailbox, long story, but so I have to have something sent to the P.O. box. And I got some medicine cups, as this vlog is about. We are gonna talk about all the medicine that my son, who recently had a double lung transplant, has to take to kind of stay living. I like this because this way it's sanitary and things don't get lost. We'll use out of pain medication. Thankfully, he's almost done with narcotics. So he will be one month post-op tomorrow. Tomorrow's one month. But we're gonna go home now because I gotta get some stuff done and then I have to go back out and go grocery shopping. This is what we waited for. Who's this? Evie. Evie? She loves Evie so much. I know her hair's kind of a mess. It's, it's okay, it's a weekend. Daddy's going to fix your hair, okay? We're doing a get ready with me stream, guys. All right, guys, I look like a person again. As part of this vlog, I'm gonna show you guys everything that Lonnie takes every single day. It's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot. So before transplant, Lonnie took about eight to 10 pills a day and he used one of these. It's like the Sunday through Monday. It just, you can put the pills in. They actually told us not to do that for a while because one, he's on so much meds, it can't just fit into one little thing. But also because his meds are changing so much that it, is how you can give incorrect medication, which we don't want to do that. We're going to sit down and we're going to talk about all of the medication. For those who are new, my 17 year old had a double lung transplant a month ago. He has an autoimmune disease we were not aware of. It basically just destroyed his lungs and caused him to be an end stage lung disease very, very quickly. And the only solution was new lungs. So now he is on a whole lot of meds. I want to say that if you're watching this because either you're about to go through a lung transplant or your loved one is, this is specific to Lonnie. Lung transplants and the medications required and the things that can go wrong with them is a lot different than like liver and kidneys. So just kind of keep that in mind as well if maybe you aren't going to have a lung transplant, but you're just kind of watching for transplant information. He will be on medication for the rest of his life, but he won't be on this many pills for the rest of his life. Before getting started, I have his full permission to talk about all of this, to share his medication. Insert clip here. Hey Lonnie, yeah. is it okay if I do a vlog where I talk about your medicine and like go over everything mm -hmm. that you... Okay. So let's get started. I need to get a new tripod, okay? Clearly I've not been vlogging for a long time. We're gonna start with the most important, which is the anti-rejection meds. I'm not gonna give dosages because they're gonna change. I'm just kind of wanting to share for those who wanna kind of know what this looks like for him. He does Emeron. Emeron is an immunosuppressant and ironically, it was gonna be his maintenance medication that he was gonna have to take for vasculitis anyway. So it takes care of his body rejecting the lungs, but also his vasculitis. Then we have prednisone. Prednisone, a lot of people know as a steroid, it does help suppress our immune system. As time goes on, he will go lower on that, but he'll be on all of these three anti-rejection meds for the rest of his life. The most important though is tacrolimus, also known as Prograf, and that dosage changes all the time. So those are the three anti-rejection meds that he's on. It ends up being like 10 pills, just that alone. The next one is the the antiviral, antifungal, and antibiotic. So he is on Valcite, he's on Crisimba, 
And then he's also on Bactrim. Now, Bactrim, he will be on for the rest of his life. He takes it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. He's done that for like the last six, seven months. But the antifungal and antiviral, he will only be on for six to 12 months after, after transplant. Next, we have pain pills. So he is on gabapentin. It's for nerve pain. Most of the pain that come after a lung transplant, after the initial period, is nerve pain. He's also on Tremadol. That is the narcotic he's on. But as I was explaining earlier, he's basically transitioning off of it now, which is good. He is on insulin. He is on NPH, which is long acting insulin, along with Novolog, which is basically short acting, like what we use to like corrective dose and things like that. And then he also takes Rimeron to help increase his appetite along with helping him sleep at night because a lot of these side effects of these meds is insomnia. Lonnie had a very, very high heart rate before surgery and it's gonna take about a year for his heart to realize that it doesn't have to beat so fast. So he is on a beta blocker, Toprol, and then he's on a blood thinner, Eliquis. Eliquis, I might be saying it wrong, and baby aspirin every day. So he had a DVT clot in his neck along with a very, very small one in his right lung. His right lung, there's his right lung. So he has to be on blood thinners for a couple months. So this is what I'm gonna call the random pills. He has to take Protonix, Protonix. It's basically to help prevent acid reflux because acid reflux and new lungs are a no-go. We also have Mucinex, which just help thins out any mucus in his lungs, basically. He does Flonase. ENT still wants to keep his nasal passages cleared out, kind of like the vasculitis ruined his lungs and there was no way to undo the damage it did. There's no way to undo the damage that vasculitis did. So he does have some nasal passage issues that have gotten way better. Then we have vitamins, a men's daily vitamin. He's on folic acid because his folate le levels in the hospital were low. Magnesium, he's on magnesium twice a day. Not sure if I understand it correctly, but the medication he's on messes with his magnesium levels, which can also mess with how your heart does and things like that. And then he's on calcium carbonate along with vitamin D. So he takes 25 pills in the morning, 17 pills in the evening, like evening time. And then he takes about five to six pills throughout the day. I do get the question if insurance pays for everything. And for the most part, yes, this is about 30 to $40,000 in medication each month. And thankfully his insurance does cover it all. Sometimes they are very fickle. Like for example, the Tremadol I got earlier for pain, they would not pay for that. I don't know why. They wanted a prior authorization. I was like, I'll just pay for it, it's $12. And then one of his Cytogam infusions, which helps prevent CMV. CMV is one of the leading viruses for chronic rejection, which we don't want him to have. So they gave him two of those infusions in the hospital, helped prevent CMV, but he has one more that he needs and insurance is saying they will not pay for it. And so that is like thousands of dollars. So we're trying to figure that out. If we have to pay for it, we have to pay for it. We've been very lucky. So if the only thing we really have to pay for is a infusion, then that's fine. But we want Lonnie to be as protected as possible, especially during the next few months. What are you doing? It's time to go grocery shopping. I haven't been grocery shopping in a very long time. Like a very long time. I won't even lie, because I've spent most of 2023 in the hospital, and then Kathleen, our respite provider, would literally just go grocery shopping, and I just pay her back. So this is gonna be interesting. I am filming the grocery haul, so I will link that somewhere, because it's gonna go up before this vlog, because it's easier to edit, but let's go. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow. We can't miss out. Are you gonna help us get the groceries out? Yeah, because I'm so strong. Yeah, I believe it. Let's go. Please tell me this is for me. Solani Juniors will have to ask him, but I'm sure he'll wanna share with you. All right guys, I filmed the grocery haul. I am so exhausted. I underestimated because I went to the grocery store by myself and then I had to call Lonnie near the end. And I was like, hey, can you come up to Walmart and help me? 
<laughs> because I didn't want to have to make a second trip. So we, we got everything to kind of just get us through the next week. I feel like I was going to cook dinner tonight, but I don't think that's happening. So we're gonna we're gonna figure something else out. Lonnie is having him some some ramen noodles along with other snacks. <laughs> It's pajama time, Penelope. Jack! Time just slips away from you sometimes. I just looked down and realized it was almost time for Lonnie's nighttime meds. I think that's the hardest and the most stressful part is there's so much pressure knowing like him getting specifically these anti-rejection meds like on a strict schedule is so, so, so important. So basically how I do this is they gave us a pencil sheet so that way we can change it as it goes. So I know for 8 p.m. these are the meds that he's gonna get kind of thing and I just kind of go through the, through the list. All right, so this is his nighttime nighttime mixture. So how Lonnie does this, he did this in the hospital and it's genius. He just puts a few of them in there and then he just, Takes him that way. He started doing it that way because right after he was extubated, he was worried about aspirating liquid. So you have to drink a lot to take that many pills. A few moments later. We're having Panda Express for dinner. Alani is having just a bunch of snacks because that's kind of what gets him the most calories in. I think he's tired of Panda Express. We ate it a lot in the hospital, but the girls aren't. Oh, so Danielle's best friend Riley from Florida has been here. And so they've been just having a great time. She actually flew in the day that Lonnie was discharged from the hospital. So it's it's been a fun time. It's actually really crazy though. Like so crazy to see Lonnie just moving around. And it's hard to explain because obviously... I didn't vlog a lot during the time when he was his sickest, but the last time that he had been in our living room was January when I was taking him to the hospital because he was in respiratory distress. So, I mean, just imagine living in a home and not going in the living room. A lot of people would ask us like, how did you do it? How did you do it? And I would just be like, I didn't have a choice. That's true. But now I'm like, how did we do that? Because it is literally the saddest thing to think about. We were just trying to get him to survive. Earlier he was walking around and he made his own ramen noodles. And just to see that, just to see him freely walking around without being attached to like a BiPAP or oxygen, it's just a gift. I didn't even realize how much of myself that I had lost in this process and I'm not complaining I would do it again a million times over I would do it again because my son lived you know it was keeping my son alive but so much of it like I just went on autopilot I'm okay for a lot of moments now I really really am but sometimes it just hits me it just hits me how close it came and where we're at now, like a month ago, my son was being wheeled off to surgery and I was just hoping it was all gonna work out because that's all I had. I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> I type in panda. <laughs> I was in Denver way too much because that's the Panda Express we would go to. And that's why Lonnie doesn't want panda tonight. I just love seeing him get back to his regular self before he would never lock his door like most teenagers would he wouldn't because what if he went into distress what if we needed to get in there you know and we couldn't get in there fast enough and now he's starting to lock his door again <laughs> yes it is a lot of medication it's a lot and it's a lot to remember every 12 hours we have to stay on the dot but like it's worth it with everything he has to do now it is still significantly less than we were doing before. Before he was taking meds three times a day, he was doing breathing treatments every four hours. He literally had a doctor's appointment like every other day. He had pulmonary rehab three times a week. It was so much. And so even with the, the things that we have now, it's still so much better. I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog now, I think. Thank you for following along in the journey. This is never a journey I thought I would be on, but I'm thankful that we're on this side of it. I will continue to share what Lonnie feels comfortable with sharing. Oh, so many of you guys are asking about the donor and I feel like I've talked about this a lot, but after six months, so five months from now, Lonnie has the option to reach out and write 
hit the donor family a letter and then the donor family has the option to write back and then it's like a back and forth thing and then they could eventually meet if like both sides want to that is up to Lonnie I really have no say in it and I shouldn't have any say in it because while yes this has affected me I'm his mother I'm not the one that went through it it's up to Lonnie it's up to Lonnie as much as she shares I was supposed to be ending this vlog I'm not very good at ending vlogs <laughs> all right guys bye where you won't make me blind you will always be there there's no doubt in my mind you will always be there heading out